Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create line panel charts with some interactive features. So let's say we charted this data in a line chart and we put this all into one chart and basically it could look like this. Very, very messy, hard to look at data and we want to have show something that is a little bit more manageable. What we can do is we can turn it into a couple panel charts. So we can do something like this where maybe we want to have it in a byte size, maybe five states at a time, and we can go from out, go for it from it alphabetically to compare or to show, and we have a scroll bar that lets us go through each set of five states at a time. So let me show you how we can do this. Let me go back up here, go back here and just copy the data. Let me go ahead and copy the well. Let's see, I'll just copy the data from here, and let's see Control A to select everything in the table. Control C. Let me open up a new worksheet. Make this a little bit bigger, and I'm going to put it right here in the. Well, actually, I'll put it here, here, and then Control V to paste. So what we want to do is we want to create another table, basically a helper table. And what this helper table does, it, it's the eventual source table for the charts. We also need to create a helper column so we can do some lookups. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a column here. And as before, I'm going to call this a number column. So I'm going to copy that and then put it here. And this number column basically is going to be our lookup. So you can I'll put one and two and three. And the reason why I use numbers is it helps with the scrolling feature that I'm going to show you later, the scrolling feature here. So after I put that together, I'm just going to go ahead and double click this fill handle to and it's going to count it all the way down to 50. As you can see down here, the last one is 50. And what I want to do is I want to replicate the first five rows of this table up here. Let me go ahead and just copy the headers here. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So here I'm going to start off with the number one. And then here I'm going to add it. So I'm going to add one to add one to this top number. So this is going to be equal the top value plus one. So basically it's going to count it up. So I'll just go ahead and move this down to when it gets to five. And once, so this is going to be the key that I'm going to look up the rest of the table here. So what we need to do now is put together a lookup formula. And for that, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP formula, VLOOKUP function, VLOOKUP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, look up this value, the number one here. So for this particular value, I want to stay within this column. And I want to keep this, when I copy this formula over down here and over to the right, I want to have that column A stay static. So what I can do is I can just press the F4 key. It's going to cycle through uh, different places where it's going to put the dollar sign and I want it in front of the A only. So what happens is when I copy it down and across this table, that A stays the same, but that number two, it'll go to three, four, and five. So that's the lookup value. So next is the table array. Where is the table I want to get, look up the value? So I want to look up in this table. So I'm going to select a10 here, you can see it's selected here, the form of the bar. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts, Control, Shift, and then right arrow to select the range across here. You can see the dancing ants or these moving slashes across the range of cells. And I want to go all the way to the bottom so I keep my fingers on Control and Shift and just press the down arrow. Now it's selected that table. Here I also want absolute values for this table range. So I'm just going to press F4. And it's going to have the dollar signs in front of the letters and the numbers. So when that happens, when I copy this formula over to the rest of the cells here, all this reference state is, it stays the same, nothing moves. It will stay A10 to H60, whether over here or down here. So let me go ahead and go to the next argument in this function, and that's the column index. So what the column index does is it says, well, if I'm going to look up this, this value in this table, which column do I need to bring it back from? So this is the first column, second column, third, fourth, fifth, etc. So with the column index, I can either hard code it in, number one, number two, number three, or I can put in another function. And the function I'm going to use is the columns function. And so what the columns function does is if you give it a range of cells, it'll count how many columns are, are in there. So the range of cells I want to start with, it's going to start with B1. 
and then I'm gonna put a colon and then the range of, the other the end of the range of cells is also B1 and the reason for that is for the first B1 I want to have that static so I'm gonna go ahead and click in there and press F4 make sure the dollar sign is in front of the B and the 1 so what happens is when I copy this over that B1 here is gonna increment over to uh, B2, B3, B4 uh, what I can do here is just put the dollar sign in front of the 1 uh, let's see how this works. Let me, I, I think that can be okay without the dollar sign in front of the one. And I'll show you how this works once I copy it over. Go ahead and close the columns. And then for the range lookup, I want to have an exact match. So I'll press click false. Double click false. And then close the parentheses. And press control enter to stay in that cell. And you notice that it brings back the number one. So what I neglected to do here, here because it says column B1 to B1 that counts one. So what I want to do, because I want the second column. So we're looking at this, we're looking at here. This is going to be the first column, this is the second column. So I want to add plus one here. And then press control enter, and now I've got AK. Let me go ahead and bring it down over here, and you can see that all the values for the other cells got looked up correctly. Let me go ahead and drag it over here. So you can see that it copied all the values correctly right so let me just pick any arbitrary spot here and we'll let's take a look at the formula so what it's doing is it's looking at a3 which is a123 here see the dollar sign have, has kept it into the same column but since there was no dollar sign in front of the 3 it moved it there see when we originally had it here it was a2 that's right and you can see even though we moved the formula copied it over here since we had the dollar signs in front of the table here it all stayed the same and this next argument, the columns argument, we have from B1, which is here, to F2, which is over here. So let's look at the columns function. It went from B1 to F2. So B1 over here to F2. So in a way, it's it doesn't really matter because it's counting columns. We're counting these columns here from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's counting five columns plus that one is six. So down here we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, April. So it, be, so it fits that. If we want to become a little neater, we can actually just put the dollar sign in front of the, the number. So it always counts this header row. Uh, maybe we should do that. Let me go ahead and, and select, this, select this cell here and just put a dollar sign in front of the 1. It just makes it a little bit more neater in terms of reading this uh, if you were to troubleshoot this. So I press Control enter to stay in there. And then I'm just going to bring it over here and double click it to bring it down. You see none of the values have changed except the formula now has changed. So it's in column F, but it's in row one. So that stayed the same. So you can see how how when you put the dollar sign in front of a, a number or letter, it stays, when you copy it over, it stays the same. So false just means that it wants to look at a, an exact match. So this is what we wanted to do. And this is the VLOOKUP form that we want to have. So let's say that we change this number to number six. If we, For number six, it should pick up Colorado. Right, and so now we have Colorado, and then it's picked up everything else since this was an addition of one to the top. Number 10 is Florida, right? So if we go down here, we'll see Florida 381 and 868, so that is the correct number. Let me go ahead and put it back to number one here. So now since we've built out this lookup table, we have to build out our chart. And so to build out our chart, what we're going to do is select this part of the table from state from B1 to H6. So once I've selected this table, I'm just going to go under Insert and Insert a Line Chart. All right, so I have my line chart here. Let me just make this a little bit smaller so I can adjust things a little bit better. I'm going to bring it here. And I'm going to put that legend at the top to make it a little bit easier for me to work with. OK, uh, let me get rid of these grid lines too. So now the, the magic in this is duplicate this chart, but just have one line for each state. So what I want to do next is duplicate this chart four times. So let me go ahead and select this chart and press Control D to duplicate it. One, two, three, four. Let me go ahead and move this out a little bit. Uh, let's see, let me move this over here. Move this over here so I can move this over here and make it a little bit easier to um, easier to work with. So let's first try, I want to keep Alaska, AK. So I'm going to delete the, I'm going to re remove the other lines. Now, not really deleting them, but basic, basically making them invisible. So what I'm going to do in the first chart 
is this is going to be the chart number one, Alaska. So what I'm going to do is make sure everything else disappears except Alaska. So Alaska is this blue color here. So I'm going to get rid of this red color. And I'm not really deleting it. I'm just ba basically making it invisible. So I selected this line, right click, and under the shape fill, I'm going to make that no fill. And also under the outline, I'm going to make that no outline. So you've, even though it's there, it's not there. So what I'm going to do next is do the same thing for the rest of these lines. Uh, let's see, for Arizona, I'm going to select that. And since I've I've done this command, I can just press the F4 key to repeat the last command. So press F4, it, it removes that line or makes it invisible. I'll look at Arizona now and do the same thing. And look at California and do the same thing there. So for my second chart, now I want to keep the second part here visible, but have the other parts removed. So let me go ahead and move these charts out of the way just to make it a little bit easier to see. So the second chart, I'm going to do the same thing, but keep Alabama. So I'm going to click on anything but the red line color. Press F4. Oh, that didn't work because my last com command was moving a chart. So what I need to do is right click and just go ahead and do the uh, shape fill, no fill, and then the outline, wait, no outline, and then no fill. I think that did it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the rest of these charts, and I'm just going to go ahead and speed up this video. So now I've got the five charts with the first five states. Let me kind of put them in order here a little bit. Maybe I'll make them a little smaller. Let me go ahead and press the Alt key and just kind of snap in the grid here. Let me move this one. Press the Alt key, move it over here. Press the Alt key and kind of move it into place here. And I think I think I'm gonna have each chart one, two, three, four columns wide. So let me press the Alt key and move this four columns wide. That's the second one. The third one is Arizona. So let me go ahead and move Arizona in. Whoops. Control Z to undo. I'm going to press the Alt key, snap that in the grid. There's the four columns wide here. Oh wait, that was a uh, Arkansas. Now this is Arizona. Let me go ahead and move Arizona over here. And then that is four columns wide. And move it over here. Now California. All right. And then Alt, press the Alt key, and then snap it in the grid here. Okay, so now we've got those set. So what I'm going to do with this particular heading, uh, this legend, is I'm going to remove it and instead put a title there. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, press Delete, and go ahead and insert a chart title above the chart. And for the chart title, this is going to be the first state, all right? So I'm going to reference this to this particular cell. So this first chart is going to equal this. B2, press enter. So it's going to reference AK, Alaska. I'm going to do the same for the other ones here. So I'm going to remove, remove the legend, insert a chart title on the formula bar, have it equal to the next cell here. I'm going to do that for the remaining of the charts and go ahead and speed up this video so you don't have to look through it. Uh, it's basically doing the same thing. So next chart. So now I have these five charts that can represent the first five rows of data. And how do we create that scroll bar effect here? So to create that scroll bar, we need to go under the Developer tab and go ahead and go under Insert and under a Form Control, insert the scroll bar. Once that's selected, we can actually draw it. Left mouse click and just kind of draw it here. So I'm going to draw it here. And we've got the scroll bar. And what we need to do is modify some of the properties. So I'm going to right click and go under here and go under Format Control. And there's a couple of things that we need to do here. So the current value, uh, that we can leave as zero. But actually, I, I like to put it as one. So it's always going to start with one. And the minimum value should always be one because that's the one here. The maximum value in our case is going to be 46. So depending on the amount of rows in the table and how much you want to count, you should minus back accordingly. So 
if the maximum value here is 46 and there's five rows, so 46 would be here, 47 here, 48, 49, 50, because there's only 50 states. So I'm going to put 50, and for each increment and change, when I press the scroll bar down arrow, it's going to change at 5, right? So once we hit, once we go from 1 and we hit the scroll bar one time here, this arrow, it's going to add five, 5 to it, and so that number, that 1 becomes a 6, 1 plus 5, 6. So it's going to be Colorado. And this 2 will be 2 plus 5 is 7, which would be Connecticut down here. So that's what it's doing. Now this page change here is when you click in the middle of the scroll bar. How much you want to increment the page change here. And so I, I, I would just keep that at 5, because it will be the same as when you click on the arrow bar. So where do we want to link this to? We want to link this to the first cell here. We want to link the scroll bar to that particular cell here, because once we click the arrow here, or click within the scroll bar, it's going to affect that particular cell. So when we cl click up arrow 1, the values here would work here. And of course we had formulas here. This is this this 2 is taken from A2 plus 1. This 3 is taken from A3 plus 1. It's going to all be based off this particular cell. So once I click OK, you see what happens. So I select it outside of the scroll bar. You see it's not selected now, so I don't have to edit it. I can just go ahead and click on it and you can see now that once I click the down arrow it's gone to number 6 that goes to number 6 7 to 10 so it goes in increments of, of 1 well one for each row plus you'll see on the charts as I press the down arrow it changes accordingly basically these five charts let me go ahead and reduce the size here so you can, you can see a little better You'll see with these five charts, when I scroll down or scroll up, it changes accordingly. And basically they're all the same chart, except that some of the series values are hidden. So this is Kansas City, KS, KY, LA, MA, Maryland. You can see that it corresponds, if I go, if I go, let me, let me go all the way to the bottom, the last, the last couple of states here. You have Vermont to Wyoming, right? So we go all the way down to the bottom bottom here, you can see the bottom it's picked up from this table, Vermont to Wyoming, and of course the values are down there, Vermont to Wyoming. So basically that's how we can create a line panel chart with some interactivity. And so the rest of it is basically in this in this case is just formatting, made it, making it look neat. So now we can just format this a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. I can right click on there to make sure it's selected. Now let's see, press escape to remove that menu and just resize this a little bit so it kind of fits into place with the other charts here. Go ahead and do that. And we have our scroll bar. So I'll select it outside. We have our scroll bar. And this gives us kind of a neat way to see this panel chart. And go ahead and go ahead and right move it over here a little bit. It gives us a neat way to see this panel chart and add a little interactivity to it. So here's another example of how to create a panel chart or a series of panel charts with a little bit of interaction. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.